Hey gang, continuing our march to the south, we are in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Very famous battle happened here, Stones River. We are at the Stones River National Cemetery where many, many Union troops are buried and veterans, a few veterans. Thank you, Cindy Fry, one of our viewers, for suggesting this. I remember this battle. Well, I'm, I'm not a Civil War expert. I'm more of a World War II guy, but I do remember this battle because we did Thomas Custer's grave up at Leavenworth, Fort Leavenworth, and he fought in this battle, and it was, it was a gritty, tough battle. Both sides really took it on the chin. But we're here to, well, let's, let's talk about a little bit of the history. I'll kind of touch on it. We're going to kind of stay in this area here. But the first thing I noticed is the different states that we have. We'll take a look here at some of the stones. You can see the names of the northern states. For example, here we see Michigan. And name is Eastman. I see Indiana, James Key, or Kie. We see Illinois, Hopkins. I see Missouri, I see, well, I see a Tennessee. Wouldn't that be a Confederate? Was, isn't that Confederate? But I see Indiana, I see all kinds of, mostly northern states here. So maybe there's, there's a few soldiers sprinkled in. But it's mesmerizing here in these pine trees and the shade, the sun is going down. Well, at this stage of the war, things could have a number of battles, things could have been going either way. The Union had severed the Confederacy's main artery, the Mississippi, and, you know, we just left Nashville. That was the first big Confederate state capital to fall. It was in Union hands. It was the winter, the early winter of 1862, December, the last day of December. And the Confederates, they basically held much of Tennessee, especially Middle Tennessee. And on the Union side, there was some, on both sides, there were the, the generals. Buell had been replaced by Rosecrans, so the, they didn't like Buell, and the, they were happy with Rosecrans. He was more of a soldier, soldier, a guy that wasn't so stuck on the rules and regulations, and also a guy who understood the volunteers. And back over here on the Confederacy side, it was Braxton Bragg. Oh man, he was, he was hated by his men, by his superiors. He, was, he had a lot of negative attributes, and won't get all into all of them, but he was complacent, he was a finger pointer, he was a, a downer. Oh, whoa, we're losing. Negative, they hated him. So Rosecrans moved out of Nashville. He came down here with 44,000 strong, right here to Murfreesboro, right to Stones River, right where Bragg was assembling, who had a force of 37,000 here. And it was on a very cold night. These armies were literally very close together on opposite sides within earshot. And it was interesting because the Federals, they played a song called Home Sweet Home the night before. And in the still of the night, the rebels, the Confederate side heard it and they started playing it. So it was kind of like that thing with the Germans and the English. In World War I where, you know, Christmas they were playing. But it, this, this was different. They didn't just stop. They, they were going to engage the next day, and it was the Confederates that were going to jump out of the woods in huge force to attack 
and the feds the federals weren't quite ready for it i mean they were prepared but this was a very strong attack right out of the woods came like a storm and it was just after 6 a.m and they were looking good they were surrounding they were pushing they were pincering maneuvers they had basically rosecrans hemmed up almost but the federals the union they held firm and i think it was said in the end that again bragg bad orders sending his you know making a lot of mistakes but basically they from the initial assault you know you had the advantage you got to close the deal but they were just kind of sending the troops up the middle like I think it was quoted by one of the generals or one of the leaders like they were sending it was like corn being fed into the the sickle or you know the sickles the sickles just chopping them down like wheat and in the end it was just two or three or four days later I forget but they I think it was three days later every both sides just kind of retreated it was just major death on the battlefield here is a beautiful sculpture well it's a monument here with the eagle on top look at that the inscription in memory of the officers and enlisted men of the 15th 16th 18th and 19th u.s infantry and Battery H, 5th U.S. Artillery, who were killed or died of wounds received at the Battle of Stone River, Tennessee. I thought it was Stones River. Well, Stone River. We'll go with that. That's what it says. But I think it's Stones River. Anyway, December 31st, 1862 to, there it is, January 3rd, 1863. So there we have it. I think there are other veterans buried here. 6,100 Union soldiers are here, but there are, of those, 2,562 unknown. And there's a thousand veterans, I'm told, that are here, and their, maybe their relatives are also here. So hats off to everybody. Thank you for your service. And for these men and these battles, we'll never never be forgotten. Rest in peace. On to the next step, guys.